Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. To support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys, head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash g-a-m-e-f-u-l-l-y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Who the hell am I? I'm a construction worker. After the bathroom, I said be right back. I'm a cop, you idiot! Pasta. Oh, I'm Detective John Kimball. Who is your daddy? Answer the question. And what does he do? Put that cookie down! Remember how we begin this show. Hello. Welcome. Hello. I think that that must be it. Hello. Welcome. (laughs) This is, oh, into the Mr. Universe, folks. Into the Maroonverse, right? Yeah. The Maroonverse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brought to you by Norm from Cheers. Norm. Thank you, Norm from Cheers. This is an Arnold Schwarzenegger podcast where we talk about the plot of his movies and then him as an actor, and then people around him, uh, side characters. Yeah, it's a little then, more. <laughs> it's a little more high concept than that, but yeah. And then <laughs> we talk about the most Arnold moment. I'm just going through it. Yeah. And then we and then we uh, ultimately give it the classic rating of James Cromwell guns and mouths. Yeah. Uh, how many? And how many guns? <laughs> Did James Cromwell's lips hungrily wrap themselves around? He moans. He moans. He does. It's the most shocking Whoa. cameo. It really in is. In cinema history. That probably means, Because he folks, was already Oscar-nominated actor James Cromwell when this movie came out. Oh, yeah. This, this movie, is post-bay. Tom, is nominated for an Oscar. This is an Oscar nominee. I didn't even look up what Oscar. I assume it visual effects. It must be effects. technical. And, and that's a shame if it's visual effects because I know. they are bad in this film. They are bad. I want to the talk digi- about The digital that. ones are bad. They're all kind of bad. They're all a little the, bad. I think the, the action's just effects. not shot very well. <laughs> yeah, this is 1996's Eraser, folks. It sure is. We're up to Eraser. Yeah, we're at Eraser. Going this, this truly is the beginning of the end. Yes. And for good reason. Yes. Um, this is from the director of The Mask, The Blob, The Scorpion King, and Bless the Child, Chuck Russell. And A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, The Dream Warriors. Oh, yeah. Who apparently had such a bad time, him and the producer of this movie weren't talking to each other and only spoke through Arnold Schwarzenegger to each other. That's a good, who, healthy, productive, creative environment. Yes, who was able to sort of negotiate the logistics of the movie, um, which w- like probably wouldn't have been completed or even moved forward if it weren't for that. Like apparently they did not like each other from the start. So like the only thing that kept this go- movie going was Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Arnold Schwarzenegger had to erase the conflict between them. Yeah, you might you think say. A, you think it's like a. Uh, like an extra, like when you go to witness protection, do they say like if you throw in like two hundred dollars, we'll we can or like for you? gold tier members? I had I had that question written a few times in my notes. Like, how do they decide which witnesses get erased? Because they're all equally in danger from equally fearsome organizations for the most part. Yeah, and this we start movie... we start out with Robert Pastorelli getting erased, but he's already, he's getting erased because he's fucked up. Right. Like he's in the witness protection program already and he went to his favorite restaurant and got noticed so now Arnold has to come and race him. By the man, we're getting into there's so many layers already that are getting peeled because like also yes. also Arnold erases everybody in the same city like he disappears them within the confines of the same city. Right. Every per- yeah. every witness he has is all he in New York seem City. He like a great eraser. No, yeah, he he's, also... he's uniquely terrible at the job of witness protection. I, I, he's great at the job <laughs> of a party clown, and I can't wait for us to talk about this. Oh my god, yes. But he also like I don't yeah I don't because um, Vanessa Williams doesn't really get erased from the beginning. She just gets put in witness. Protection. Right, she gets put in regular witness protection. 
Right. So, like, I, I guess we're going to get into the plot. That's our first segment. And I also want to use this to talk about why this movie doesn't work. Um, I mean, there's some great moments. Don't get me wrong. But this movie was a failure, if I'm... No, it was not a failure. No? But it was the beginning of the decline in, like, Arnold as a as a big box office guarantee. Like, this movie was not a failure, but it didn't do... Okay the numbers of, of an Arnold action movie before it, like True Lies, or they didn't do Arnold okay. numbers. This is when his numbers start to dwindle. I think it's for three reasons, one of, one, one of which I'll talk about later, but the first being that the plot is, is like, gibberish. It's, like... It's, it's really confusing. I didn't realize how confusing it is until I was watching it this time. This is a movie I've seen over 20 times. Yeah. As you should. Yeah. But it, it it's definitely, like... For example... Every now and then in my head, I get this confused with the sixth day because I'm like, which one has a laser gun? That's got to be the sixth day, right? It's got to be the future one. No, it's a racer has like this rail gun. That's this futuristic a, laser gun. It's a rail gun. A, rail gun. It's, okay. It's a hat it's on a, a hat. Different fantasy, is. different fantasy weapon. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a magic science gun that shoots miracle bullets at the speed of light. It's the you, coolest gun ever. <laughs> they like invented cool. a cool ass gun for this movie, and uh, it's, it's weird because it's, like it, it, you're right. It's almost an afterthought. Like they forget about the gun for the most of the movie. Well, it goes both ways. Where like there's a point where I'm like, like at the end when they blow up in the fan, uh, that that's like, oh yeah, that van's gonna blow up. I forgot at that point that he's an eraser. Meaning that I was like, oh, right, that's his thing. He erases you. Because he only does it twice. Once at the beginning and once at the end. It's not really his thing. Um, they introduce, like, a bunch of ideas, like, that he's, like, this master of fraud or something. But, I mean, we'll get into it in the next segment. That's all to say that it, it just feels like very generic action at a certain point to me. Um, the idea of him being in a there were so doesn't many, really matter. Right. There's like so many layers to it. They introduce this conspiracy with this weapons manufacturer. Like the basic plot is, is he's a witness protection U S Marshall guy. Um, there, Vanessa Williams works at, for this weapons manufacturer, the defense contractor called Cyrez. Um, she finds out that they took a government contract to produce this fantasy gun, this miracle weapon, the rail gun from the U.S. Yeah. government, but took the money from the contract, made the gun, but told the government that the, they weren't able to because the gun wasn't possible, but they actually yeah. did make it, and they're auch auctioning it off on the black market, and they're selling it to Russians, why Russian bad they, guys. Why would they do it? I that? don't know, because you'd make so much more money making these for the government in perpetuity. Right. <laughs> like, also, the, you would do madness. it legally. Yeah. <laughs> it's really silly. Yeah, you just, just do it legally. Yeah. There's no reason not, not to do it legally. No. It, it's very silly. Um. And so, yeah, th that's all to say the bad guys make no sense. It seems to be run by this well, Congress there, guy. There's, who, well, he's an undersecretary of defense. Oh, right. And I guess he wants to do a treason for some reason, but we never for really money, get into Dave, it. For money, Dave. Beautiful money. This, this one it's Russian really gangster funny. who we don't meet until the end and whose entire operation appears to be just him on a boat yes. apparently <laughs> has enough money to seduce the undersecretary of defense... <laughs> Uh, there's so many people in this conspiracy. That's like another reason why it's confusing. It yeah. for some reason involves Arnold Arnold's mentor, James Kahn at the U S marshals. For some reason, it's not clear why they needed a U.S. Marshal to be part of this plan. Dave. I mean, yeah, to put this in perspective, at the very end, he kills the bad guy. But in order to do that, there has to be like five of them all in a limousine. Like he has to kill a car full of bad guys to kill the bad main bad guy. And that's why it's so convoluted. One of the like one five of the fucking people. <laughs> no, I want to. I have to point out. I have this written down, so I might as well just. Yeah. Uh, uh, share this thought now. It's one of the people in that car, as I mentioned, is the Undersecretary of Defense. So effectively, the climax of this film is our hero fakes his own death so that he can murder the Undersecretary of Defense. Yes. With a train. Yep. And, and he murder. murders him with a train. Yeah, there's no self defense here. They don't whip <laughs> no, out a gun. They, they like, lock them in a limousine no. and park them in front of a train. Yeah, this is an assassination. <laughs> 
He doesn't even do they it. They were himself. killed by Robert Pastorelli. Yeah. They were killed by a TV's mobster. cracker. Yeah. It is such a weird Elvin movie. Elvin from Murphy Brown. <laughs> the plot is it's nonsense. It's a nonsense plot. It's but... it's it's magic. It's just a, it's a it's a pretty honestly a pretty standard action movie from the 80s and 90s. It has a magical understanding of the way governments and businesses work. It has this magical sure. understanding of what the US Marshals are and what witness protection is. Um, Here's my yeah. my second point of why I think this fails, though. And maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. Uh, the action's bad. Uh, and what the- I mean by that is, like, you know how I always gripe about, like, when a stunt is done via CGI these days, where, like, a car, mm-hmm. a car stunt is done via CGI, and it's like, what's the point? This is kind of the 90s version of that. Like, there's an entire skydiving scene that I was like, this isn't thrilling because I'm just watching Arnold on a green screen just fly the, around. The wild with a fan. thing is, is you're watching Arnold on a green screen for some of it. Like, some of it yeah. actually is a dude skydiving and wrestling with his parachute. There's yes. one part of it where Arnold has to do the dive away from the door with the, it, it, you know, the scene that was in the, the trailer where he leaps yeah. out of the airplane and goes to the engine smoke. That's like a Alan Rickman and Die Hard stunt. He had to fall, I read, about 65 feet. Like, they're, they're trying to use it to blend the action in, in this movie, which is the correct instinct. I think it that, doesn't that's look act, good. It doesn't look good. And I think that that's true for the action throughout the entire movie. It's all, all the action sequences are conceptually cool. That airplane scene, that's a cool concept. The yeah. zoo, why not have crocodiles eat fucking Drake from fucking, aliens? Yeah, uh, that's a the, cool the final idea. Fight, the final fight on a, on a shipping container that's being held by a crane and it's teeter-tottering, that's a cool idea. None of it looks good. None of it looks <laughs> or none good. Or none of it looks those, as good as it should, yeah, right, I, fucking, I should say. The alligators, like, they, they the alligators look like shit. Look, I remember thinking the alligators looked like shit in 1996. Exactly. Just being like, wow. It, they, it just and didn't look good. It's just so, they rely way too much, I think, on effects of the time. Like, like the yeah, the skydiving, there are some amazing shots where you're like, well, that's not Arnold. Um, like, I just saw that man's <laughs> face. That is few, a stranger. There's a few where it's like, choice, not yeah. Arnold. Like, Arnold's stunt double on horseback and true lies level of that yeah. is not him. Yeah, I do not believe that. <laughs> and then it's just intercut with, yeah, some of the worst optical, like, green screen effects. And so, yeah, you just don't so, yeah, feel just, it. Uh, Even though they had a real stuntman do something, right. you don't feel it because you're like, this is badly made. And I, um, I didn't want to poo-poo them for that, so I wanted to be clear that, like, they're blending and they have the right instinct. That it just doesn't yeah. look good. And I think... I think the budget on this movie is something nuts, Dave. If That's I remember wild. correctly, uh, I don't want to speak would actually, out of turn. But let me, I would let me actually, look it up. Right on. I'd actually argue the ending is also a problem. You're right that that fight is conceptually cool. It's just the problem is it's with it's against James Caan. Right. Um, so and, in order to show it, they keep having to cut to these super super wides that are really yes. far away because it's not either of them on this right. shipping container. And it's just like, it just sort of ends with it dropping. Yeah. And then that's is not cool even idea. how James yeah. Conn dies. No. They have to do this, this, this fucking, uh, fucking pro, not prologue. Um, epilogue. Like, Epilogue. I couldn't think of the other word. This epilogue where he like kills him on the side with a train. I'm like, that's not heroic at all. No. Like, that's, it's... that's the thing is like, the, the uh, set yeah. piece is good, but they don't even pull it off. Right, because, like. you know, like uh, like I was saying earlier, how I never noticed how confusing the plot of this movie is. Like, I never really noticed that that's supposed to be the game of this final fight, is that they're on this teeter-tottering shipping container, because they don't really shoot it that well. So, Not like, really, no. you don't. The concept doesn't really land. It never landed for me until this viewing. I'm like, oh, that's a cool idea. It should have looked better. Yeah. <laughs> you should have maybe conveyed that more. Anyway... Don't yeah, crit- I, I don't want to critique Chuck Russell. <laughs> no, I mean, well, I really like Chuck Russell's other work. And yeah, it sounds true. like this is not him at his best. He is not speaking to the producer. So this is one where everybody comes out of it clear to me, where I'm like, well, clearly there was an issue behind the scenes. $100 million, where they were... by the way, budget. How much? $100 million. Fuck me. Mm. And, like, that's 1996 money, folks. So That used to be that's... what they spent on, I mean as the case that we've been making throughout this entire series, man, they used to spend that money on Arnold because that used to be a guarantee. Yeah. 
And like this is, uh, yeah, this is the equivalent of a movie like, I don't know. I, I don't even think it was as much of a disaster as like Madam Web, but budget wise, right? It's that kind of thing where you look at the budget and you're like, wow, they spent a lot of money on that uh, and it didn't work out. And so, I don't know. The, yeah, they shouldn't have made this movie because like if 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 the director and producer aren't on speaking terms, don't make the movie. And it shows. It just ultimately shows that like, Nobody had their heart in this one. Everybody was too busy fighting, apparently, or trying to keep the peace. Yeah, there's a lot, it was of, just kind there's of, a lot of weird ideas in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that fucking laser gun. The laser I mean, gun. And he ah. teams up with the fucking Sopranos. With the mob in the end. One, yeah. of the, one of the guys is from Analyze This. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the guy who plays mob. Mob guy, mob guy all the time. In these kinds of movies, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, what are we doing? This is such a weird... There's so many hats on hats. And it's like, I don't know. The third thing I want to talk about is the next segment because it's about Arnold's character. Um, but I guess we're going through the plot, which is... thats I mean, that, that's the plot. They basically... He's trying to keep Vanessa Williams safe from the furious rage of James Caan and this this uh, uh, conspiracy to, to sell these magic guns. Yeah. The FBI is making this poor woman do, like, spy work for them. And then she gets caught. Her boss uh, confronts her and shoots himself. Uh, and I just like the part where he shoots himself. And then it cuts to her in the lobby trying to leave like nothing Yeah, happened. trying to walk quickly out to the <laughs> yeah, lobby. Yeah, like her boss didn't just blow his brains out and shattering a window. And we with know, a gun with no silencer. Like, the, everybody it heard the gunshot. blasts the window and, like, sucks all of his documents out and... Right. We know in the beginning of that scene that she's on the 25th floor because she says it over the radio. So she rides an elevator for 25 floors down after this and it's tries amazing. to briskly walk through the lobby. Right. And then <laughs> As if they... James Cromwell didn't just hungrily eat a hungrily. bullet. So delicious. <laughs> he And then they are like, you need to go into witness protection, which I don't actually understand because she gives them evidence and has recorded everything, including the suicide confession of her boss. So I'm like, how much of a, how in danger is she really? Um, how much of her testimony I mean, do you actually need? Because she copies... She copies the evidence and gives it to them. They have it. Right. I mean, we are in the in in the, we are in a time where a Boeing whistleblower has seemingly uh it perhaps true. <laughs> yeah. And that's another one where it's like, how much more what are they even covering up if that is? I there is know. there is something they do say in this I mean, I did have that thought when we were watching this movie, because when she calls up her reporter friend and and tells him that the FBI is basically leaving her out to dry. John Slattery and the FBI. Yeah, he's in this. John Slattery is in two scenes in this movie, and in his one scene, I swear to God, he smokes five cigarettes. Yeah. Like, he keeps yeah, yeah. lighting new cigarettes. It's amazing. It's a very John Slattery thing to do. It really is. <laughs> it um, really is. Shit, I got distracted. All right, so she's talking to her. <laughs> she's talking to her reporter friend, and her reporter friend is like, "You need to go public. They won't dare touch you once you go public." And friends, I laughed aloud at the yeah. TV. I was, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, they, they will." Fuck, they don't give a shit. This movie's very naive in certain ways, uh, especially the, a, the way that a the lot bad of guy... these, a lot of political thrillers from this era seem very quaint and naive. Right, the bad guy, on. just the idea of we're going to go to the uh, the enemy and we'll make our real money then because, you know, apparently America, our government, we don't spend enough money on weapons. Like, it's just so adorable. And America doesn't sell weapons to countries illegally. Like, yeah, <laughs> we all it's do like this already. Do... Like, you don't yeah. need to. You don't need to act this sneaky. Remember Iran you're, you're Contra? Be rich. That was yeah, ten you'll... years before this movie. <laughs> yeah, you'll be rich. Just sell the stupid guns to America, and then they'll drop it off in South America or whatever. It'll be fine. They'll put in an order for a million of these guns a year, and they every year for the next fifty years because yeah. it it brings money to some congressman's district. You are good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that's the movie. There's a series of bits. They, they, yeah. they go to a drag bar, and they're surprisingly cool about it. When the drag a bar little. scene happens, I'm like, all right, calm down. 
Let's all be cool about this yeah. 90s action movie. Yeah. Um, Robert, pa- Robert the- Pastorelli is, is cool about it, but he does say, like, uh, no self-respect and wise guy would be caught dead in here. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's the gag they're going for. Yeah, that's the gag like, they're going for. Is he hides him in a drag bar because the mob won't look for him there. It's the 90s. We had the birdcage came out. We were, we were like, into it, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we um, this is them trying to be progressive, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. Um, it, it's also the 90s, so we have the Alka-Seltzer seizure scene, which I feel like happened in everything in the 90s. That's later. Um, yeah, but it does involve Robert Pastorelli. It also does, yeah. Um, there's this whole, like, I don't know, the James Conn stuff when they're in that cabin and with the witness. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. There's, there's, oh, where there's James Conn smooches a lady to death? Yeah, Imagine that. The kiss of Imagine death. getting smooched to death by James Conn. It's amazing. <laughs> James Conn, I will say, I will talk about it more. If it was anybody who could take on Arnold, I'm like, I don't know why, but James Conn is it's it. It's James Conn. Yeah. He's like a bear, you know? He's, well, I mean, that was his whole career was he's like the, the toughest son of a bitch. You know, like he's, right. he's supposed to be like a coffin nail. That's true. That's true. Like, he's yeah, sturdy, if there's one yeah. old guy that could beat Arnold with a crowbar atop a swinging shipping container, you, Jim, Jimmy Kahn. Yeah. Jimmy Kahn. Should we um, talk <laughs> about technically? Sonny Corleone. <laughs> <laughs> beat him with a trash can. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, so should we do technically not Arnold? Yeah, we should. About... We should. So I'll tell you the the big issue I had with his character. Uh, he has no arc. He, he I know what <laughs> I think his arc is supposed to be. He's also bad at his job, but yes, continue. Yes. <laughs> his arc seems to be the best I could figure out. Is he says I work alone at one point, and then at the end he's murdering them with other people. But there's no line where someone says like work alone, huh? But that's like that's as close to an arc, and it's barely anything. He doesn't really. So it's part of his character. He's very compassionate. That's what I noticed about this character that sets him apart. Is when they talk about what they did to Vanessa Williams, he right. immediately he, says, like, it's messed up what you did to her. That's he's not anti, right. He's anti-government. Like, the movie has kind of a libertarian viewpoint because most action movies of this era did. But, like, right. he's pretty anti-government. Like, he's like, he does this not just to protect people from criminals so that they can testify against them, but he also does it to, like, protect them from, like, the government's horseshit. Right. Um, and then he's just very, like... It's weird because he does insane things. Like he, he oh, he's you a know, maniac. His, he's a maniac. He his, takes on a plane. He's he's doing all this. There's a lot of collateral damage. He's I need to make a point. Have you noticed? Okay, so we see him do two erasures, basically. Three if you count the guys in the limo at the end. Right. So his first erasure I is... do not count the guys in the limo at the end. That is a murder, Tom. <laughs> but he does say you've just been erased. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, I'm saying the three times that it's somebody says you've just been erased. So I'm counting right. the three erasures in the movie. Right, it's Robert Pastorelli enough. in the beginning. So what does he do? He fakes their death very elaborately. We'll, I'll go unpack that a little bit more in a second. But um, he fakes their death very elaborately with all this pageantry uh, and then blows up the house. Yeah. Uh, the second one is he goes to rescue Vanessa Williams, uh, goes to erase Vanessa Williams. So um, he creates a bunch of dead bodies and blows up the house. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Now, I see a pattern if, we're, if, here. if we're not counting them, if we're not counting well, the limo. Well, he also blows up a van. Not, right. That's what I'm getting to. Yeah. So if we're not counting the limo, his MO for erasure is he just comes and blows up your house. Yeah, he puts a couple of corpses in there, which apparently his boss is like, where'd you get those corpses? So I guess he wasn't supposed to do that. I could spend so long talking about, okay, I could spend three episodes talking about how his process of erasing people. But like, so when he comes to save Robert Pastorella in the beginning, he and his wife are tied up. He's getting beat up by, I think, three mobsters. Yes, it's three because he steals one of their bodies in the end. I'm getting to that. Yes. (laughs) Uh, so they're 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 wailing on him. They're about to cut his tongue out, and then Arnold appears in a ninja mask and does yeah, a spin does. kick to a guy. That's the first thing he does. 
He absolutely um, but, um, does these things you're describing. So he kills everybody. He kills all the, the bad guys. Uh, he dumps fake, fake blood on Pastorelli and his wife. I'm just going to call him Robert Pastorelli Johnny because that's his character's name in the movie. So he Johnny dumps C. fake blood on Johnny C and his wife, takes photos of them, takes Polaroids of them to make it look like they have been successfully murdered by the mob. Yep. And then he swaps their bodies with different corpses that look vaguely similar. Um stages two of the dead henchmen out on the lawn one of puts the polaroids in one of their pockets and makes it look like they shot each other in a reservoir dial reservoir yeah. dog style standoff then Calls the st- cops. steals the body of the third mobster <laughs> blows up the house and calls the police and then and later he switches the teeth records that's right later he switches yeah. the teeth records but like so this is the plan to fool the mob into thinking Johnny C was dead. So from if, if his plan goes off without a hitch, from the mob's point of view, what has happened <laughs> is that they sent these guys out to the house. They blew up the house and successfully killed those guys and then did the good, the bad, and the ugly to each other, and one of them vanished into the wind. Like, it's like... How is if the purpose is to fool Why? the guys yeah. into thinking Johnny is dead, he should not have killed the mob guys, right? Like yes, he killed like, he killed all three of the assassins and is also trying to make them think that they successfully assassinated right, a the mob guys. They might know these assassins. They'd yeah. be like, Why would they? They were siblings. Right, Why would they cousins. kill each yeah, other? They were best yeah. friends. Yeah. Like, it's a very suspicious series of events. Right, it's like, did. it's a child's understanding. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a, also a, a, like, magical understanding of, of the way these organizations work. Right, well, I can't stress this enough. I can't stress this enough. When he goes to his boss, his boss is like, did you steal bodies from the morgue? How'd you get bodies? Which implies to me that he went rogue, that he wasn't supposed to do that. So, like... Oh, there's another line later that backs that up. You remember his belt buckle knife? Yes. <laughs> his shitty belt buckle dagger? When he fucking dagger? throws at James Caan, he calls it like a fucking magazine. Like a... I, have it, I have it written down. Okay, um, it's so um, good. Um, I can't believe you nailed me with this piece of mail order shit. So yeah, like that's that, such a good so line. So the James Coburn line and then this line from James Caan is the movie acknowledging that Kr- what Kruger does is not by any official guidelines. Like, he's bad at this. Like... My, my argument is that Kruger is, you know, he's very empathetic. He's anti-government. He's specifically bad at his job of disappearing witnesses, but he's really great at staging scenes. He's a theater yeah. kid. He's a theater kid. He's a theater well, even his, He's like a, a birthday s- clown. You you hire him. He comes over. <laughs> he cr- he stages these elaborate like scenes with all these. He he spends so much time coming up with like escape routes for Vanessa Williams and code words and secret. Oh, yeah. uh, meeting places and stuff. I he mean, gets really into setting all of this stuff up, but he's a terrible U.S. Marshal. Oh, yeah. He said, so it starts with him <laughs> saying, I work alone, despite the this fact that This is why. <laughs> well, he also clearly doesn't, because right. when he erases Johnny C, he has people he brings him right, to. There's, there's three other, there's two other guys there. Yeah, who say you've just been erased. So what I think is he's leading this small crew, and from what I can tell, like I'm not sure there is a such a thing as erasers. Like I think he's the only guy. He doing is. He's this. the only person that behaves this way in the U.S. Right. Marshals. Because I think all he was asked to do was get him out of there. Johnny C is just like, okay, you got to go rescue him, and we have to put him back into witness protection. He's very bad. I mean, there's a part where he brings Vanessa Williams to Chinatown and goes, no, you'll blend in here. And I'm like, no, she won't. She very specifically won't blend into Chinatown. Like, that's not a place that she's going to blend it's in. It's like I mentioned earlier, he, we, meet the two other, we meet two other people uh, in the movie, apart from Vanessa Williams, who have been erased by him. There's the, the priest uh, and Johnny yep. C., and they're both in New York City, and he calls on them both for favors to help yes. him. So, so, which means, especially Johnny C., which means bringing him out in public with him, like a known yeah. U.S. Marshal. <laughs> this is like, you know what? This, this could have been a 90s TV show. Yeah, yes. Um, where the eraser, and every episode would end the same, which is that the quote-unquote, like, 
character he's trying to protect dies and they they fake you out every time to be like no they've just been erased and i can see like the show just doing that every time and it being really cheesy and bad but everybody loves it that's the feeling right where there's other people who are just like yeah he erased me i'm here to help out and it's just like it implies this bigger world around him that he's been yeah. doing this for like decades of erasing people. Yeah. But all he's doing is doing witness protection, just fancier, but less good. Less good witness protection, a louder witness protection. Right. It's like if witness protection was the game and yeah. you have to the game people. Yeah. Um, and so, again, going back to his arc, he doesn't have one. Um, no. He says, like one of the, he literally says to her when they're burning her, like her stuff. He goes, "Those are just some numbers and plastic. What makes you you is like in your heart." Like he's so compassionate from the start, and I just want to point that out because he's doing these like cold-hearted things, right? He's killing henchmen, he's blowing up houses, but he's very nice to civilians um, from the start, which is all to say that he he ends that way too. So like, there's nothing. And again, like, I work alone. It's like, no, you know, you work with people. So, like, he has nothing. And I really think that's a big problem. Because when you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger films, he kind of always has a really fun arc. Yeah. Or a journey, like True Lies or, like, um, Kindergarten Cop or Twins. Any of the ones we talked about, he starts one way and ends a different right. way. And that's he himself watching. is a fun character in it. Yeah, watching him interact with the world is mm -hmm. one of the most fun things from an Arnold movie, and there's nothing here. Like, right, yeah. He's not a fun character in this. Yeah, there's and there's a like lot not of it, really much to him. Right, and a lot of it's because Vanessa Williams is a non-character. She might as well be a dummy, because she has nothing. They give well, her nothing. She's, she's they the give one, her they, they, she's like the moral center of the movie. Like, she always... She feels bad when, we're, when the audience is supposed to, like, even when her scumbag ex gets killed, she feels bad about we'll that. She feels about bad that, about yeah. putting them in danger. She wants to, she still wants to testify, even though there's all this danger. Uh, she, she's the moral she, compass for the audience. She presents no challenge. But you're right. She doesn't grow at all. She's just good. She starts the movie as purely good and ends the movie as purely good. <laughs> right, and like she doesn't bounce off of Arnold in any way where it's like... No, they, they just get charisma. along immediately because they're both like completely altruistic human beings. <laughs> yeah. Like, so there's just nothing there, and it, and I, and it I do really have sucks to, the life out of the movie. I couldn't find anything by this, but I do have to wonder if maybe there was a romantic subplot that was either written out or changed because I of the cast, that. because they were, believe it or not, they were still doing that in mid-90s. Um Oh, like interracial stuff, right? Like a couple of years before this, uh, yeah, the Pelican, the Pelican Brief, famously wrote out yeah. a romantic subplot between Denzel and Julia Roberts for yeah, that reason. People don't re I don't know. People don't that was only three how, like, years before this movie. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where like when right wingers are like racism is over, it's like I don't think you remember like the last twenty yeah. years. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> like it is. It anyway. is fresh. It is. Uh, yep. Anyway, he says, "Get ever. out." He says, get out. That's the line. He says the line. He does. That's right. Um, he can, I wrote down random character things. He can tell a fake ID by feeling it. By lovingly like caressing this, it. Yeah. yeah he, he does the like face off this, thing. Yeah. He's like, has this like spiritual connection to forgery yeah. where he's just like, conf I don't know what he's, I don't know. The, the idea is he has a natural talent, right? For erasing or forging things is the idea. I, I had a question like, he does his own tech work. They again, he's like feel, he's feeling the fake IDs. They show him doing changing the um, dental records, and it was like, don't you have a Tom Arnold for this? Like, isn't he works alone, field, Dave? I know he's the field work guy, and he's the tech guy, and it, that's very funny to me because um, it's just like even if it wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's like. Get, be good at one of those two things and let someone else be good at the other thing, right? Because that's even more evidence that he's not very good at this. Right. And his related to that, his typing, I'm just going to take it as Kruger the character and not Arnold since that's what we're talking about. Right. If he's doing, he's like so insistent on working alone that he does his own tech work and he types like a man who has never seen a computer before. Dave. Yeah. 
It's it's like wa- it's watching your grandparents struggle through an email. A hundred percent. It is they, the he could not find it within himself to pretend like he knew his way around the keyboard. This is an issue is they don't play to his strengths as Arnold. And and what I mean by that is like, yeah, Arnold isn't a tech guy. That's why he always has a tech guy. So showing him do tech is like And it doesn't mean he can't be clever. No, his, yeah. I mean, his, his, his true lies before this, you know, he, his, him about, about being, him being a clever, charismatic spy, and, you know, he's, he's, it's just, it's this weird thing that we, uh, we got into with techno thrillers and, and Vin Diesel movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where it's just like the, the hero has to like be uh, an, an, an X game champion and also Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he, yeah, I mean, on that subject, they also present Arnold as a sort of master of disguise in this, which is another He's one where it's like... He's a theater kid. He loves yeah. the costumes and the fake blood. He shows up as a balloon delivery guy in one scene. He shows up as an EMT at the, the James Conn fucking bad guy place where it's like all they have to do is see him. All they have to do is but look... But he's wearing the, a hat. Dave. <laughs> and they'll, they'll be like, that is him. He sh- Even if he they sh- don't know he what he looks like. He shows up as an EMT with Vanessa Williams yes. also disguised as an EMT to yeah. the building where she works. All they have to do is kill them. Like, it's that he's bringing the witness that he's projecting to them, yeah. in to them. And in and fact, all they this have sequence to do... ends with James Conn kidnapping Vanessa Williams and taking yeah. her away. Yeah, because this is a bad plan. Because it's they, stupid to bring the the person in danger right to the people that she is in danger from. Yes, it's so it's so silly to look at Arnold and go, "That's a man that can wear a disguise." Like you don't even have to know what the guy the the racer looks like. You'd see that EMT and go, "I bet that's him." Like I th- that that man is uh, is built to kill. Like that is that is a man who yeah, blew up a house. Possibly gigantic Austrian man. Get that man. Get that man now. Yeah. And then they also make him weirdly nimble, which they've done in a few. Like he leaps like a squirrel a when few times. When he does that corkscrew flip in the over end, the bad the guys docks? at the on the docks yes. at the end, there's no reason he could have just dumped, jumped straight down on them, which is effectively what he does. They right. just had to include. <laughs> shot of some gymnast that is clearly not Arnold right. Schwarzenegger flipping down to the, to the to the ground like a sprightly little ninja. <laughs> right. And this is all to say they're not playing to his strength. They're like, all right, this character, he's going to be nimble. He's going to be nimble like Jackie Chan. Uh, and then he's going to be like a hacker, like a cool hacker and yet, like knows how to work his way around the computer. And he's a master of disguise. And it's like, those are three things you can't really give to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Th- three skills that don't often overlap. They definitely yeah. don't. And a man that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And so like, he's they're difficult just, to hide. He really is. And so it's all to say that his character, he doesn't really have one. And the, the attributes they give him, like, he's doing fine, you know? Like, this segment is about him as an actor. Yeah. He's, we've talked about that. He's a good actor. He can do the He things. is. They're just not... You're right. This they movie is too, many, right too many hats, and it's it's not usually a character they give him. They don't give him anything, really, that's like... That his characters normally have. He doesn't typically play somebody that is like this legend, you know, where it's... I mean, he has yeah. in, in Commando, but it was very tongue-in-cheek. Um, and we talked about that in the in the Commando episode. Part of what made that movie interesting is he's like lampooning an image he didn't really have yet at that time. This movie right. just unironically is Commando, where he's just a completely non-existent character and everybody talks about how awesome he is and he can just do everything. But it's not tongue-in-cheek, it's done in earnest. Um, so it's just kind of a very silly movie, which is not yeah. a bad thing for an Arnold... Schwarzenegger action movie to be it's just not it doesn't play like you're like you've been saying it's not playing to his strengths it's like we don't the reason Arnold has done so well is not just because he looks cool blowing shit up it's because he is an entertaining performer and we're not really giving him the things he's good it's like it's like at all it's it's like pushing Arnold out on stage and expecting him to juggle like it's not what he's good at no, so like it, it's a big part of why this movie I think fails is he's not that fun to watch. They yeah, don't it's like give John him Kruger is just like it's 
he's I don't know. He's just I like the idea of of imagining him as this theater kid who gets really excited about creating these new identities for these people and the pageantry yeah. of it, the theatricality of of erasing people, which is really just <laughs> blowing up houses. It just arson, amazing. just lots of arson. Arson. They should have called this the arsonist. <laughs> You've just <laughs> You've just been You've just arson. Been arson. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been arson. You're like, not even sure call have. it arsonist. Call you know, it arsoner. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at the house like, you know, I had a cat in there. <laughs> like, oops. Well, it's sorry. just been, I've got some bad news. Your cat <laughs> has just been arsoned. <laughs> just been arsoned. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, John should we the talk about... Arsoner Kruger. <laughs> oh, I want that movie. <laughs> Just, oh, there's another about, um, aspect of John Kruger that I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. I think his defining characteristic, aside from how excited he gets about all the pageantry and the theater kid stuff, is that he's dumb as a post. <laughs> so James, yeah. The, the, James Conn comes to him with a very, very obvious trick. Like, he's like, oh, somebody's murdering all of our witnesses, including one of yours, so you got to tell us where she is so we can go save her. And Arnold does not trust this from Jump. He's like, I don't know. Yeah, he's suspicious of him, yeah. We, let's go rescue your witness first. So James Conn's like, okay, we'll go rescue my witness first. It just means he murders his own Oh, witness. no, she's dead. She's yeah. dead, and that's when he smooches the lady to death. But, like, Arnold is suspicious of this plan every step of the way. Um, so, and then to the point of he tells them that she's in Atlanta, and then they get on the airplane. He's still going along with his plan that he has believed from Jump is suspicious, not the least of which James Caan shows up with Billy Bedlam from Con Air, and that's yeah, never a good sign. If yeah. Billy Bedlam's on your team, you're not a good guy. No, no, um, that's a murderer. <laughs> that's so a, uh, yeah. He, he tells them that, they're, that she's in Atlanta, so they, they take off and they're about to fly to Atlanta, but he drinks a drugged bottle of water, and the instant, friends, he realizes that he's been dr- drugged, he takes out his cell phone and pages Vanessa Williams to tell her to run, and they just trace his phone because they have a setup right there on the plane, which he knows about. Yeah. It's the thing he can see. All he has to do is nothing. So they just immediately figure out that he's lied and that she's in New York, and they turn the plane around. Like, he immediately leads them right to her. You're right. He sucks. Even after going through all of this, like, I'm suspicious she's in Atlanta, he just... Oh no, I've been drugged. He immediately texts her, I've been drugged, help me. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> just gives the game away. He's yeah, so you're right. dumb. He's, he's really dumb. He might he's really be the bad at he might job. be the dumbest Arnold character. He might be, you're right. He's very dumb. Okay, that's the last thing I wanted to get in about no, John Scrooger. That's a great point. That's very, I'm He's very, very glad you stupid. That out. I didn't even think about that. He is a bad eraser. And he walks into the the he walks into the final confrontation when they start shooting at him with the rail guns, and he's surprised to see them. Like he yes. his his whole plan is to just stride into yes. the docks with a with a shotgun, one shotgun. Yeah, and some mobsters. Uh, and the mobsters aren't with them. They're at the gate causing a distraction. He's oh, walking right. in alone with a shotgun. And then he sees a little x-ray scope that I'm sure is just nuking yeah. his balls. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's sterile. <laughs> just right on him. And he's like, all right, they have the super gun. Yeah. Like, he forgot Doesn't he get nailed with that at gun. one point? <laughs> What's that? He gets nailed with that too. I feel like he. he oh they, no! They, they like he they survives an assault. He, yeah, he, he like falls on like some a metal. He piece hurts of his bar leg. Or yeah. They have to injure him a lot so he can fight James Con. <laughs> they like give him like several injuries because they're like it's James Con versus Arnold. Well, I feel like we need to like. I feel like they didn't. They did too much because it's not John Lithgow versus Sylvester Stallone. It's it's James. Like we were just yeah, talking again, about. It's I, James Conn. Yeah. yeah. So all they really needed to do was give him a crowbar. Like they didn't need to also stab Arnold in the leg and shoot him in the arm. Yeah, but they like, did. I would believe Jimmy Conn with a crowbar <laughs> can wail yeah. on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, instantly. That's like. <laughs> Such a, that's, that's like the a, best part James Conn with a crowbar is an omega level threat. Yeah, imagine seeing that on the street. You <laughs> would be terrified. seeing that. Yeah, coming at you in a, in a fucking tank top you all sweaty. E- you wouldn't even call the police. You'd go straight to the prayers. Yeah, you would. 
Yeah, you know, skip yeah, it. Police is getting that. They'll never get What are they going to do? What are they going to do? It's like if you saw a tornado. You're not going to call the police right. for a tornado. Well, they're going to show up and do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Definitely not Arnold, our best side characters. I want to start with the mob guys who are killing Johnny C. Only to say that I love how at work they are. Like, he, he, he breaks his hand. He says, get some ice. I think I broke my hand. The other guy just goes, sure, boss. While he's kind of casually, without passion, pouring gasoline on the man's wife. Yep. Like, I just love how at work they are. Yeah, they're all. just a couple of goons at work. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, <laughs> just going to burn these people alive. After they cut his tongue out. Yeah. With pliers and a stiletto. Yeah. Uh, but again, they've done this. This is like their third stop of the night. Mm-hmm. Like they're just—they're old just, hands at this. They're yeah. They are very functioning very efficiently as a team. Yeah, I love these. That guy's guys. thinking about what he's going to eat later. That's all he's thinking about. Um, Johnny C. Um, I kind of want to lump him in with his cousin Tony at the docks. Uh, his fucking Frank Sabatka ass cousin. Um, all to say that like I love that these mobsters. This guy from the FBI shows up and goes, I need you to help me take on the CIA. And the mobsters are like, yeah, we'll do that. Sure. Like, they're just so game to help Arnold take on the CIA. Yeah, it's like very rocketeer. All he has to do is tell them they're they're anti-American. Yeah. And it's happening on your fucking docks. It's like, you know, a lot of mobsters got deported. Yeah. (laughs) By the FBI. (laughs) I get, it's the CIA. The idea, I love the idea that the mobsters are like, we can take on the CIA, and they do. One of the guys out snipers a CIA assassin with a laser gun. This mobster who's apparently like a fucking Navy SEAL. Um, yeah, the CIA assassins who, by the way, even with their years of training and this elite magical super science myth, myth gun that they're yeah. about to sell to, to Russia... Not a single one of them can hit one man. Yeah. They don't they never hit Arnold. They're terrible at they it. They shoot five hundred bullets yeah. head and then they never hit him. Yeah. It's just amazing that the, the power of unions yeah. where he's just like, fuck these CIA pricks not using union labor to fucking sell to these commies. It just reminds me of like like in Batman where like Uma Thurman goes into that mo- like the, the street gang and like easily kills them with Bane. It's yeah. like, imagine yeah. if the street game was a problem. Like, that, these people are basically Batman villains. They have a laser gun. Mm-hmm. They're, like, so well-equipped, and just a handful of mobsters completely ruins their night. Um, they, they, it's just that takes a lot of people sucking. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people willing, like, mobsters who are way more willing to take on the CIA. Right. There were, like, 30 people in this operation, and four mobsters showed up at the front gate, and at the end of the night, all of us are dead or in prison. Like, that yeah. shouldn't have flown apart as right. quickly as it did. And again, the FBI is basically, a witness protection is asking, like, mobsters famously don't like law enforcement. So, like, the idea that law enforcement would show up and go, I need you to help me, they would immediately assume this is entrapment, right? Like they're, right. they're setting it us shows up. up with the guy that squealed on another mobster, and yeah. it's like we need. And he's like, your "Here, help. I'm here with a federal agent. <laughs> we need your help fighting the CIA." Like he just has a like, network yes. of stoolies. <laughs> yeah, they would have killed them in that room. Yes, that's all they would have done is just shot Arnold and their fucking cousin, and 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 then moved on. and then moved on to that where they were loading up the guns and demanded a cut. That's what yeah. would have happened. Yeah, they would have just said, give us some money. And they were like, yeah, here. <laughs> sure, here. <laughs> That's fucking it. Um, shout out to the guy who says to Johnny C, smile, you've just, just been, been erased. erased. Yeah, I love him. We never see him again. How long did he We'd practice that? How excited was he to finally say it in a real world situation and not just I in the know. training room? I think he's like there's like assistant erasers where it's like a it's like a program right where they're like tailing they're shadowing um, Arnold mm-hmm. and he's like you get to be the guy who says this um, yeah that very excited uh, James Coburn um, real it's a real James Coburn in this movie he's well one of these guys is the bad guy one of these you can't right. give me both of these dudes I was I, that's what I had written for Coburn at like at this point in his career in the 90s and then into 2000s like he's he's just playing Waternoose from Monsters Inc yeah um so it, it, he's just 
kindly old mentor that may or may not betray the main character. Yeah, exactly. In this movie, he doesn't. No, I mean, he's very silly in this one where Arnold goes to him and goes like, he goes to Arnold. I need and he's five like, more bodies you... to erase somebody else. Oh, eraser, <laughs> you've gone and done it again. <laughs> no, he's weirdly like he goes to Arnold when Arnold's on the run and he's like, You're not acting like yourself. This is not like you. What's going on? And he's like, James Conn is the bad guy. And Coburn's like, I don't know. And it's like, You yourself just said Arnold's acting very weird. Like you he does not believe Arnold would be a traitor. So it's just funny how much it how much convincing it sort of takes him. Um, but he gets there. He gets there. So James Kahn is a maniac. He sends people with a laser gun. He, again, he's trying to assassinate a lady, I assume, subtly. And he sends, like, two guys with laser guns. It apparently guns. doesn't matter, subtlety. It's three guys. And they have a grenade. Right. And <laughs> one of them it's, is Drake from Aliens. They're, like, prepared for Arnold. They're, they're not prepared to kill her. They're prepared to fucking... Fight also, oh, also, the whole point of the climax of like getting the mob involved and everything is that the guns aren't supposed to exist, right? This this defense yeah. contractor took the money from the government and made the guns and told them that they didn't make the guns, and now they're trying to sell the guns secretly for way more money. So why then would they go assassinate this witness in this case about this defense contractor doing this exact thing using the guns that aren't supposed to exist? Like you're leaving evidence of these guns. It's at a the very house. bad idea. It's an extreme. And then they bad blow up idea. the house. And then they blow Technically, up the house. Technically the eraser blows up the he erases the house. They're doing such a bad job, everybody. He I mean he his plan is to drug Arnold on the plane. And I don't know why he 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 has to like bank on him drinking the water. Um, so it's like he's gonna betray. Arnold's a big fitness dude. He's gonna open one of those waters. Yeah, did he like drug all the waters? You think? I don't he know. did. Yes, because Billy Bedlam goes to drink one, and oh. Khan's like, "No, no, no!" He hands him a Pepsi, and he's like, "You'll like this better." Okay, it's just such a weird, convoluted plan. Like, right, why does he why need... does he drug him? Like, he yeah. just all he does is take his gun. I guess so. He's not a Why? problem because it is a it is a loose Arnold on an airplane. You do want to drive oh, yeah. him before you re, you but reveal your betrayal. That's true. It's more like why do you bring Fabrizio? Um, we haven't talked about this. Fabrizio yet. Fabrizio's from Titanic's in this, or the guy from uh, fucking The Rock. The Rock. I was gonna prefer. another. <laughs> or the guy from I think you should leave. Good old uh, Fabrizio was uh, dying yeah. tragically a lot uh, during this point in his career. Yeah, he's like you knew. I knew immediately he was gonna die because you're like, hey, he hey, has I'm gonna the die face. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, you, James Gunn's gonna murder you. Sure enough, he shoots and Fabrizio, he, Dave, on a plane, and it's like, why did you bring him at all? It's weird because he brings this like team to go get this witness, only to kill her. That's the whole point. Yeah, and like he shows up, and the bad guys are like, you're you're late or you're early, and he says you're late or whatever, and it's like, so you're working with them. Why did you bring this team? Why are you trying well, to make this The whole team look, is working know. with him except for Fabrizio and Arnold. And Arnold is there because he's trying to get to Vanessa Williams. We don't know why he brought Fabrizio, but it doesn't Fabrizio, matter. Fabrizio yeah, was just trying to do good. And he seems like he's trying at first not to kill him. He does that thing where he's like, he, he kind of feels like, ah, it's a shame. And it's like, why did you bring the kid? If you, if you just were like going to bring, like either make him do crimes or kill him. I don't know. Again, he's a maniac in this. Uh, a well, maniac, he, 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 and he's he, doing he, it just he, for money. He frames, he uses killing Fabrizio to frame Kruger for it. He frames Arnold right. for it, so maybe that was his plan, but still, convoluted. It's, it's convoluted, and then when Arnold jumps out of the plane, he tells the pilot at gunpoint to fly into Arnold, which is amazing. I know. Because there's a few things, like, is that pilot part of their little gang or is he going to have to kill that pilot when they land because he does it he's like forcing the pilot to do it and also what a fucking thing to do amazing yeah I want to see his face on that windshield hell yeah, yeah. James Scott <laughs> yeah he also has the line I want this city locked up so tight it'll make his balls ache and I wrote that one down because I was like huh yep I'm going to be thinking about that for a while trying to yeah. unlock that puzzle he brings a hostage to his arms deal. It's just very funny for that Russian guy to be at the docks and like the guy, the CAA guy you're doing an arms deal with brings a hostage. 
Like if I if I like bought a car and the car dealer brought a hostage, I wouldn't buy the car. And I feel like for a weapons like this happens in a few movies where they bring a hostage and they're like, what's that for? And they're like, let's call it insurance. And they're like, okay, I would ask more questions, right? I'd be like, insurance from what? Do we have a reason to be worried? I thought this was going to be like a pretty simple arms deal, but you brought a hostage and he's like, I'll throw her in. She's part of the deal. And I'll I would sweeten be like, the pot. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to murder. This, I don't a different, witness. this is a different kind of heat. All right. You brought a witness. Yeah. And you're like, you now have to kill this witness. And it's like, this is a bad deal. Fuck you, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You've added he's extra a... charges onto this. Yeah, he's really out of control. I'd like to talk about Daryl. 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 Uh, 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 Vanessa Williams left ex. notes on her car. Yep. She's been broken up with him for three months. She She comes home from this whole ordeal with the FBI. And he's just taking a shower in her house when she gets yeah. there. They've been broken this up for three a, months. This is like an, he's in the, another movie. He's yeah. in a 90s thriller. He's in like enough. Yeah. And he shows up and he's, he's in like, like the hand that rocks the cradle. Yeah. He's taking a shower. He acts like he lives here. And she says like, you broke into my house. What are you doing? He's got to stop leaving notes. Like he is a fucking he's a menace. maniac. He's a menace. And he then he gets take... shot so hard, he, he won't flies across no the an room. Answer. Yeah. No. <laughs> he won't take no for an answer. He'll take a laser gun for an answer. He gets shot through the heart with an atomic bullet from a science cannon. Yeah. And he it goes d- so far. <laughs> the bullet kills him so hard. It, it embeds him in the opposite wall of the room. Yes. <laughs> like, embeds I... him like Wiley e. Coyote. <laughs> I feel like Daryl was added in a later draft. Where they were like, we want to show. <laughs> we got to show like, how this gun works. Yeah, I feel like the gun was la- added in a later draft. But like they, they're like, we want to show the gun. Let's invent this man named Daryl, uh, who let's make him as despicable as we can, so that we can just murder him. And then he is briefly mourned in the van, where Vanessa Williams goes like, "Oh no, Daryl!" And then she is never spoken of again. No. Nope. Throughout the throughout the his movie, ass is it. lodged in her living room wall. <laughs> yeah, he's They're gonna got def- a fucking cannon shell in his I chest. Like even blowing up the house, it's gonna seem unusual, right? Like the firemen are gonna go through and be like, "This guy, this charred skeleton is half in the wall." Uh, I'm not sure how that could have <laughs> happened. Seems like he got shot into the wall with a laser cannon. Shout out to. Uh, James Cromwell real quick because I just want to point out a shocking cameo yeah also like I don't think he would go to jail for very long like this is the how the movie's naive like I'm pretty sure the government would bail him out of this situation of like making these like all he'd have to do is just agree to sell these guns to the government I feel like yeah we'd never even hear his name yeah we would never even learn his name yeah, instead he just fucking gobbles a gun. Um, he does, man. Good in God. In front of his employee because he wanted her to see. Yeah, he's like, remember, it. you left me no choice. Yeah. He makes the craziest noise. Yeah, he really does. It is. It, oh, I, I, <laughs> oh. it is shocking. Yeah. Um, uh, we keep mentioning Drake from Aliens. Mark Rolston is Scarface Assassin. Yep, Jay Scar is what he's listed in for some uh, reason. Hell yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, he falls for the secret handshake line and gets shot in the leg, which was just very funny to me. Mm-hmm. Like that's like that's like something like a villain in Home Alone would fall for. And then he's murdered by an alligator. He gets Home Alone to death, you might say. Yeah. He's killed yeah. by an environmental trap. You're right. I don't have much else about him. Maybe, no, that's, that's it. I was just calling that out. Um, I wanted to call out the mustache guy at Cyrez, that dude that's like, I've done wet work. It's like, so you've done wet work only on three continents. Like he's their head of their security oh, team. Yeah. He's this kind of balding dude with a mustache. And they introduce him this way where he's like, I'm this badass head of, 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 of what is essentially, I guess, Blackwater. They're like, oh, this private security that's going to be locking things down at Cyrez. I'm a no nonsense guy that's done all this wet work. And then all he does is sucks out loud. He gets bullied by James Caan. And then Arnold breaks his neck in the 
stupidest way ever conceived. Like, if you sketched this out on paper, you would be arrested. <laughs> like, you would just, <laughs> you would lose all of your jobs now and forever. Like, they, oh. nobody would, they would look at this and be like, how did you even, like, he, he grab like, this guy comes around the corner at Arnold, so Arnold grabs his arm, puts his arm around, his other arm around right. his head, spins him around so that he has him in, like, a reverse headlock and then jumps up into the air and they yep. play this neck snap noise. And it's like, how did that even work? I feel what? like, I feel like if someone did that, I would maybe go limp just so they would not do it again and pretend to be dead. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't know what that was. It was very uncomfortable. So I'm just going to go limp. Yeah. Yeah. It's like somebody inventing a wrestling move. Yeah. Uh, the undersecretary, I just want to note because we talked about him, but like, him and and honestly james cromwell like it's just so weird what they're doing um it, it's just like why why would they do this what is he the joker like why is he selling this shit to terrorists or whatever yeah it's i don't weird. know it's weird i need more information yeah <laughs> um money it's like i don't believe money you could just uh, like fucking this guy's getting get lobbied so much by the money. tobacco uh, yeah exactly yeah. The, the lobbying he got from cyrez to give them this contract yeah it's like, like what He's Why do you all need right. More money? I don't know. I mean, maybe um, we're the ones being naive. It's know. just Billy like they, they do this out in the open, is all we're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's very dumb. Yeah. Uh, Billy Bedlam, I just want to shout out to like, he's like CIA goon. And it's like, I don't, how do you even get into that line of work? It's just such a wild where he's like, he showed up a looking henchman. like Billy Bedlam, I think. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you're perfect. Yeah. Um, shout out to the skydiver, who is clearly not Arnold. Love him. Um, Love him. Since we're doing definitely not Arnold, that man was definitely not Arnold. The two kids in the junkyard who sassy kids. Yeah, Arnold treats them like Martians. Like he, yep. like he treats them like they don't understand the value of things. Like he right. tries and to th- trade them his parachute for their dad's tow truck. Yeah, and then he get they give they sell his dad's tow truck for fifty bucks. So they're gonna be in they're gonna be in trouble. Right, they've ruined their 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 arnold has ruined this man's business like he's he's yeah. a, a single dad raising two kids uh he's they a also, small business owner ruined it by treat, stealing his wrecker they also treat him like he's a martian which is weird because he is clearly a human and he's a, has a parachute and it's like oh yeah it's like come on i mean i guess they're just giving him sass um they're pretty great uh shout out to the alligators who are immediately, they've been thinking about this that for is years. all they've been, th- they put them in the middle of like a restaurant in this yeah. reptile house. There's like tables around. They shoot the glass and the alligators are like, I am going to immediately kill as so many they've been, things they've as been, I can. They've been watching fucking <laughs> New York City professionals on their lunch break drinking alligator themed martinis in yeah. front of them for the past 15 years. I am going to go on a fucking rampage. Yeah. I can't wait. They're like, we are dismembering people now that we're right. free. Uh, shout out to Father Rodriguez, um, who is the other witness protection guy, yeah. who like has some sort of crime background. I just think I he's was imagining... Stoolie. They're all stoolies. Yeah. Because it's a witness protection program. I was imagining like going to this priest and like, I bet there's people who are like quietly, like, I think he was in the mob. Like, I bet he accidentally lets things slip every now and then, like during confession or whatever, about how he knows what it's like to take a life. Right. Like Like, he has a teardrop tattoo. Yeah. (laughs) I just love mobster priest. Who's like trying not to be right. Like that's a separate movie. Yeah. Same with the drag club is like Johnny C in the drag club. You know the other bartenders and people were like, I think that guy was in the mob. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a witness protection guy. Um, I like his little the, his fellow bartender who's very nice and supportive. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Evan, I think. Evan, yeah. Um, uh, okay, I have one more. It's a big one for me. The medic lady who keeps... Uh, zapping the man who is clearly alive <laughs> keeps zapping Robert Bastarelli, who is very clearly telling her to stop. Yeah, who is like, I'm alive. No, 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 please stop. And then she sees like Arnold and goes, Oh my god, terrorist. <laughs> and it's like something I she's like, the vibe I get is that she's never had anything happen before, she's never seen anything. Yes, she's never been surprised. 
including a person with a medical issue. Like, I don't think she's even seen a splinter. So, like, this guy comes in with an actual medical issue, and that's why she's like, I'm going to zap him and zap him. I don't no. care how many times he says no. And then she screams terrorists at this guy. Like, she is just so overloaded. Yep, I think she's never experienced surprise before that moment. So when yeah. she sees something unexpected, she does not know what to do. Yeah, she's learning what surprise is. Mm-hmm. It's uh, terrorism now, in her mind. It's terrorism. No, that's yeah. all I had. Let's go to the most Arnold. Um, the most Arnold moment. I feel like we have the same thing written down, but... Oh, man, I don't know, actually. I have, I have two different things. I'll go first uh, this time. I feel like I make you go first a lot. Um, so I, the two that I had pegged are when he, um, I had it written down. I just don't want to, I want to make sure I don't forget all the details. It's when he grabs that guy in the, um, in Cyrez, uh, he, he lets him get shot, like, like uses him as a human shield to get shot a million times and then right. pulls the pin on the grenade and kicks him into an elevator full of his coworkers it's and then great. just blows him up. And that's because it's in an office building during working hours where people are oh, working. Yeah. And they're supposed to be sneaking in here undercover and, and stealing files. So he blows up an elevator full of men just yeah, in an office building, building. <laughs> yeah, during yeah, a day. That building is done for at least a month. Like, but then they, they... there was another thing that happens in the same sequence that struck me as even, an even bigger Arnold moment. And it's when the, the machine, the computer, they're sitting at the computer with their secret disc and it won't give them the disc back. So he bashes the computer open with his gun and rips the disc out. And that is it's chef's so good. kiss. That's that so is good, Arnold. perfectly encapsulates his relationship to technology. Yeah, <laughs> he cracks it open like a fucking walnut. Yeah. It's amazing. Like an ape discovering tools. Right, and I love it because he's like, I just need that fucking disc. Yeah, this fuck is... this. I'm just smashing. Yeah. It's in there, and I know how to get things out of that. Yeah, exactly. Um... I, uh, that neck break you mentioned, shout out to that because it's such a convoluted, and it he has feels a, he has like a couple Arnold of impossible neck, neck breaks break. in this yeah. movie. There, there's, but, there's that one, and there's one in the beginning where he breaks a guy just like by pressing his forearm into his neck, and yeah. that that's fanciful. Yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit where yeah. it's like it's the kind of things that it, like a child would then try it on the exactly. ground and this, nothing would happen. There's a there's a lot of magical thinking in this movie. Yes. <laughs> Um, but I'm gonna have to obviously shout out to your luggage as oh, being like of course. It's like the only line that came out of this movie. Like, right? It's the only line that like like people remember. Yeah. Um That's and so true. your luggage said to an alligator after shooting him. Yeah. The only uh, thing that yeah. makes it slightly not Arnold is he should have said it before, but they rightfully knew like you know, he doesn't have time before. The alligator is about to kill him, so he has to say it after. Um, right, and the, the alligator won't appreciate it. Yeah. Like, you, so yeah. you say the one-liner before you kill a dude because it's some cold shit to say to somebody. Right. Like, make it, oh, oh, man, you just made, like, a pretty good pun. Oh, I'm dead. Like, that's a terrible yep. way to, to, to leave this world. Oh, yeah, to hear a pun. It's a pun hateful thing to do to your thing. enemy. Yeah. Um, there's something that reminded me of something at the very end of the movie. This, the way this movie ends made me gasp, too. Because it's after the train murder where he <laughs> blows these men up with a train. Right. And then he gets into the, uh, a car where Vanessa Williams is sitting. And it's like 20 feet away. And she says, what, what happened? happened? Yeah. So first of all, she didn't hear the huge explosion. <laughs> and a train probably derailing after that. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. Trains very often derail in, in cases like that this. That woman was right when she said, yeah, oh my he God, is a terrorist. terrorist. He did a terrorism. But he says, um, they caught the train. They caught the train. And the, no kidding, the second that last syllable leaves his lips, boom, credits start. Like, this yep. movie gets the fuck out. It does. It knows it's overstated. It's welcome. Yeah. He says, yeah, they took I the mean, train. Boom, 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 boom. Like, credit music is playing. <laughs> yeah. Like, God they damn. really, they were like, yeah, we have a line. <laughs> it's like Take they a were bow, sprinting everyone. out of the building. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> they ran out of film. They they were like he said they caught the train. They're like we barely got that line out. We, we don't want to shoot it again. Barely Let's made just it fucking, in. Yeah. Uh, uh, should we rate this this movie? I think so. 
uh, between <laughs> one and twenty James Cromwells with guns Bullet in the mouth. Star of James Cromwells. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to give this a 15 out of 20. 15. 15 Cromwells. It's not a good movie, but I enjoy watching it. Yeah. I enjoy watching it not for the reasons the movie wants me to. (laughs) Yeah. I I like to believe deep down they all just could agree that they wanted to make something that was entertaining and... I was entertained. (laughs) I was entertained. I've seen this movie many times. This... uh, it came out when I was 13 and would see every single movie uh, and then watch right. them over and over again. But, you know, be that as it may. It's fine. It's, I, I mean, again, it's not it's, fine, but it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's entertaining it, in retrospect. Yeah. For all the reasons we point out, it's, it pointed out, it's kind of like the beginning of Arnold's uh, recession as a major box office player. And the and these kinds of movies too, these kinds of big budget, goofy action movies really became kind of embarrassing for a while. Yeah, and, I mean, and not like fun way, in the way that like people sort of treat Fast and Furious and things like that now. It's kind of the way superhero movies are a little bit now, where it's like, okay, we're we're getting a little tired of it, you know. Luckily, True. he's gonna he's gonna turn it all around, and after this, he's gonna do Jingle All the Way. And then Batman and Robin. <laughs> Batman and, and end Robin. End of days. Oh so, man, end of days is oof. And then the sixth day. Oof. So he'll turn it all around. Oof. And then we'll get collateral damage. <laughs> oh, that's a brutal string. That's a brutal like six years for Arnold. Terminator three. Um, around the world in eighty days. <laughs> the kid and I. You know, it's all it's all gonna be great. So, well, he becomes governor in two thousand three too. So. Oh, okay. That's enough. That's a big reason why he's not in stuff for a while. Yeah, that makes sense. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to forget uh, for some reason. Yeah, it is. But oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Arnold was a governor of the entire state of California twenty years ago. Yeah, it's weird. That happened. Uh, I think he did all right. I don't remember. I wasn't here for that. Nope. Uh, okay. Well, that's it. That's it for this one. Um, big ol' sloppy thank you to Norm from Cheers. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Can't wait to watch Jingle All the Way with him and Sinbad. <laughs> That's going to be a movie. It is a movie. You're it's right. It's definitely a movie. You're, you're very, I don't you're very correct. I remember hating it, but... I've watched you know. it recently, actually. It's fine. Okay. Well, I'm excited for that. <laughs> it's going to be something. It's... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until then... Uh, well, this was through our Patreon, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed, G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y, unemployed. Uh, we watch movies every Friday night. We have um, exclusive podcasts. Tom and Jeff watch Batman, Fox Mulder's a Maniac, Star Trek The Next Street Drama, Spielboys. That's for $5 a month. You get access to four extra podcasts um, that are out like weekly or bi-weekly. Uh, some are monthly. It's a lot of it's a lot of extra podcasts. You should check it out. And then, of course, there's other tiers like the tier of producing your own podcast. Um, so check all that out. Yeah, give it a look. See. Yeah. Um, also, head on over to gamefullyunemployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store where we have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs you can get on T-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. So slap your little peepers on that. Yeah. Before oh, it gets yeah, erased. Yeah. Until yep. Yeah. Because we're gonna we're gonna squeal on some mobsters. Yeah. If both of our houses explode, you know why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, you know, we're both very, very bad at working our stoves. It's very true. Bad. It's true, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one or the other. We were erased one, or <laughs> if our houses explode and one of us is found. <laughs> Embedded ass first in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah, probably laser gun. Um, you know, just potential uh, eraser situation. God, I would love to get killed by a laser gun. That's it'd be cool. Mm, it'd be pretty it sweet. It would be real cool. Yeah. You'd be in the history books for sure. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Just wear a funny hat when it happens. I'll guarantee you. Oh, yeah, like a leprechaun hat. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. I'm just picturing it now. Okay. Yep. Bye. All right. Bye.
Australia 